Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to show you a very common mistake I see people do when they stick to the MVI architecture in Jetpack Compose projects. So something I see all the time is that people have such a screen composable, they inject their view model in it as a parameter, then refer to the screen state, which is simply just a, a state class here that combine, combines your whole screen's state. And then in the screen itself, they refer to these state fields and also send actions to the view model in form of such events, which are just a sealed interface in this case. So far, so good. Let's get straight to the point. What is the problem with this? And there are two major problems with this approach, which are both very easy to fix and doesn't require any big restructuring but you will have to do that in the end problem number one is this is very bad for making the preview work for your whole screen because if we would create a preview here um what is it called main screen preview we can have our compose view model state theme and then put in our main screen here if we take a look in our design tab or just split tab and then rebuild, we can see we get render issues. Why is that? Well, because our preview does not know how to create our view model. So if we take a look in our view model, we see, okay, this view model here is actually taking in an instance of the repository. And of course, if we just assume that Hilt will properly inject this view model, then this will work for our real code and our real app if we launch it, but not for the preview. Because how should this preview know how our repository looks like, it can't know that. So what we would need to do here in order to make our preview work is we would need to pass a custom view model just for the preview. So we would have a view model here and now we need a repository. So we would need to pass in a custom repository just for this custom view model. You might need to construct your actual repository or create a fake one, which might need other dependencies. And it's also very common that your view model does not just need a repository instance, but has many more fields that are injected in the constructor, which would all need to be passed for a simple preview. We just want to see how your UI looks. The simple looks of your UI are actually only dependent on the state, but not on your whole view model. So this can be a good solution. Another problem this current approach brings is that we can't test our main screen in isolation using a UI test. So testing something in isolation just means th that we really just take a look at this specific main screen and ignore all outside factors that could have an impact on how this looks like. One of these outside factors would be our view model here. So an isolated UI test in this case would, for example, just check, hey, if our field one is this specific value, is this value really the text of the text composable? And can we find this text with a value in our screen? On the other hand, we have integration tests, which are also very common and also make a lot of sense, where you might want to test how your UI interacts together with your view model. In that case, you of course need a specific view model for testing, but not for these isolated tests. But what I'm trying to say is that also for your isolated UI tests, you would need to provide a custom instance of your view model, which you don't even need for these tests. So here, if you take a look in Android tests and I have a sample test class, where we set the content of our UI test to main screen, this would still take in an instance of our main view model and we would need to provide our custom instance here because otherwise the UI test won't know how our view model is constructed. And even if it would know that, we wouldn't be able to test the screen in isolation because it would always interact with our view model. So let's finally see how we can fix this. And this fix is actually fairly easy, but you have to apply it, of course. First of all, in your screen composables, don't pass the view model. Keep your composables view model free. And instead, you want to pass the state class here. So our main state, and we can then also get rid of this line. Because in the end, your screen doesn't need to know anything else other than your state to display all its UI components. But also you're seeing that we also want to send events from the screen to our view model. And because we don't, now don't have this view model instance anymore, we can't execute this on event function of our view model. For that, we can very easily just pass in a Lambda here called on event and we send main events in this Lambda function. And then we can simply get rid of this view model here and we just call our Lambda. But at some point we have to initialize our view model, right? Yes, of course. And we want to do that instead in our main activity where our nav host is. So in this composable block, we can now safely instantiate our view model and get the state of it. So we can say we have our view model is equal to hill view model of type main view model. And then we say we have our state, which is equal to, or which is by view model state collect, uh, collect. Oh, I'm actually not even using a flow here. So we can just set it to 
view model that state. I'm just using compose states here for the sake of simplicity. And then all we need to do is we need to take the screen composable and pass in our state. And for on event, we simply say view model double colon on event. And we just delegate all these UI events we send from the screen composable to our view model, which we have access to here. Now, the big advantage of this approach is that if we take a look in the preview, we of course now need to provide a state, but the state is really everything we need in order to see a preview. So we can now pass in a custom state. And for example, we can, see, uh, we can say, okay, what happens if the field two is actually hello world? And we leave the other fields at the default. And then we can also say on event, uh, actually here, uh, on event is equal to an empty lambda because we don't care about these events. And now we actually see a preview because now it's working and we can very easily now change these fields for the preview. So we could also change our field one, which is an integer here to something like 50 or 156. And then we will immediately see that in the preview or almost immediately here, as you can see. So that is how you can now very easily see your whole screen as a preview in isolation without actually needing to instantiate a view model for that or so. And getting back to UI testing, this is now also much easier because we could now just set up our main screen for this specific UI test with a specific state instance, for example, a main state that has, okay, or field two is, or field, yeah, field two is hello world. And then the test, uh, let's ignore the events like this. And then the test would simply just see if it can find a text composable on the screen that has hello world. It could also be a UI test that, for example, checks, okay, if the is loading field, I'm I think I already have that, yeah. If the is loading field is true, that you actually see an overlay or a dialogue on the screen with a loading spinner, that could also be, uh, be a UI test. For that, you really don't need a view model to check if the UI properly displays that if the state is true. And of course, this only works well if you stick to this type of architecture where you have one state class per screen and use these UI events, which is commonly done in MVI. With other types of architecture, this might not be as easy as that. But in my experience, I have not found a single downside of this approach of using this type of architecture for Compose projects because having a single screen state just uh, yeah, synergizes so well with Compose since only those composables that use a field that changed will recompose and not the other ones. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then you will definitely also find my more advanced Android premium courses helpful, which you can all find using the first link in this video's description. Apart from that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I will see you back in the next video. Bye bye.